I'm joining you fresh back from my holiday to review the opening game of the Rugby World Cup and boy did it not disappoint. A colossal encounter between France and the All Blacks uh, meant France came out on top 27 points to 13, a scoreline that potentially flatters France quite nicely considering a late score from Jaminet stretching out the lead. Now it was uh, an incredible encounter between these two uh, rugby powerhouses but I would say uh, it was very impressive from the French the way that they uh, they pulled away in the end. Now I predicted France to, to come away with a win and uh, not necessarily by this margin but uh, it didn't really look like this was going to be the case early on. New Zealand started really fast with an amazing try of uh, from Talea, a beautiful crossfield kick from Bowden Barrett, pinpoint accuracy into the far left corner, Talea dots it down within 90 seconds. I'm questioning my whole prediction, I'm questioning my whole rugby knowledge. I did not see this coming. Now that actual attacking position was set up from an amazing break from Rico Yuani. Poor defensive read from Moefana in the midfield sent Rico through and they looked like he was going to go all the way but some good French defence and uh, and yeah that, that set up the initial attacking position. Aaron Smith had a couple uh, snipes from tap penalties and the French were giving away penalty after penalty. Now I was surprised that potentially there wasn't a yellow card because there's a lot of um, continuous offences that was stunning the, the, the masses of uh, momentum the All Blacks had but they did cross in the end for a five pointer unconverted uh, like both of the two tries from Mawanga but yeah All Blacks 5-0 and uh, yeah it was shaping up to be uh, a very open game now the reason for this I felt was the, the breakdown it was I don't want to call it a mess because you've got players like you know Sarveya Aldri going in for the ball who really know what they're doing but I did feel like um, it was very open, it wasn't very penalised, which meant a lot of turnover ball and the, the, the speed of game was quite high. Now, the atmosphere was amazing, but I'd have to say in terms of the quality of rugby, although it was intense, there was a lot of sort of drop balls and errors, um, which I don't want to say it was, uh, replicated the pressure that the players were under, which it probably did, but uh, I think it was a bit of a greasy ball as well. Now, I've mentioned the first try from Talea. In the first half, it, that was the only try. Um, France stayed in the game and actually held the lead at half-time to the, due to the boot of Thomas Ramos. Now, he is absolutely lethal. From 50 metres, he was kicking them. Uh, incredible talent off the tee. He did miss a couple, which is just, um, yeah, it's just a rarity in rugby. You don't see Thomas Ramos missing kicks. Um, but, uh, yeah. It was, a, it was a lead which you could potentially say France maybe didn't deserve in the first half, seeing as they didn't really look like they were going to score at any point. The All Blacks did look the more threatening, but I'd say a lack of composure and uh, a lack of killer instinct meant the All Blacks didn't really capitalise on some good attacking positions. Now, just to go on a couple uh, pros and cons of both teams of their performance. Now, I'd have to say that the scrum was a massive point of difference for France. Um, Uni Antonio really getting the, getting the better of the All Black front row and uh, yeah, causing a couple scrum penalties which resulted in good possession, uh, field position and ultimately three points for France. De Groot was struggling in the scrum for the All Blacks, they were ma un under masses of pressure and as soon as the referee pings you once or twice you've painted the picture which is really hard to reverse so look I'm not going to pretend that I know <laughs> what's happening in a scrum but it, look, it looked a little bit scrappy and you just have to go with whatever the ref says. Now, a negative on the French side. I thought their set-piece defence was relatively poor. Uh, you look at Moa Fana's poor defensive read that sent Rico Ioani through uh, for the first try uh, from Talea in the corner. I felt the French conceded quite a lot of metres off first phase attacks from New Zealand, but New Zealand just really didn't capitalise. There was a couple of times in which they're a metre out, they look like they're going to score. The French would give away a penalty and, t and concede the three points, but... They were worth, the All Blacks in that field position were worth way more than three points. So maybe if it was played in New Zealand, the referee would realise that's a cynical penalty and penalise you. Who knows? But I have to say the French did well to stay in the game. They, they were very composed and uh, that's how they led at the half-time break. Now in terms of what New Zealand did well, I thought they moved the ball really nicely. Uh, I thought they'd set up some amazing field positions through running rugby. Bowden Barrett from fullback. Bowden Barrett, he kicked phenomenally. I thought Mwanga did as well from the All Blacks. The distance on some of their kicks was phenomenal. They were kicking from 22 to 22 off the pitch, which is just a huge net gain. So I thought some of the kicking was really intelligent from the All Blacks. Uh, maybe slightly guilty of overplaying in certain instances, but look, I thought they set up some good attacking positions, but just really didn't execute. As I said, the counter-rucking also, Ardi Sarveo was making a menace of himself, Papalihi also, just really sort of 
making the ball real scrappy for, for Dupont, who, I mean, Dupont's an incredible player, one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world, but he wasn't given clean ball throughout the game. A lot of it, he was sort of running backwards, then passing. A lot of it, he was searching for the ball, so the All Blacks did well to disrupt there. As I say, the scrum and the lack of killer instinct are the two sort of things that I'd attribute the loss down to. They never really um, could execute a you know, upon some real quality attacking positions, sort of five metres out, even less at some point. Now, in terms of the French, what can they do better? I mean, as much as this game doesn't look too close, I mean, the French have doubled the All Black score, but it, that doesn't replicate the game uh, at all. They're two tries apiece at the end of the day, so look, that tries is usually a replication of how dangerous their attacks were. So look, they really cancelled each other out in that, in that regard, and it was just the boot of Ramos which, you know, is a tactic in itself. You know, you can't... Don't hate the player, hate the game, as they say. So, look, France did what they needed to do to win. But going forward, I'd like to see them utilise their maul a lot more. I felt when the French maul got going around the halfway mark, it looked really, really um, threatening. Uh, they had a lot of venom up front, and I didn't feel like they... Uh, supposedly, they kicked to the three points as opposed to going to the maul. But if they did kick to the corner, I really thought they could have reap some rewards off that driving mall, but look, we will never know and uh, maybe it's something that they'll use later on in the tournament. Now those are sort of my talking points. Uh, actually one thing I will mention is the card from Will Jordan. The game was nip and tuck until this point. Will Jordan goes up, he does get off the ground a little bit but takes out um, the French player in the air, yellow card, uh, not overly dangerous but lands on his side. So look, you follow the process and it's a yellow card, which I don't, I don't like yellow cards and red cards in games. I love to see a game with no cards because it just you get to really see who the better team is. But it's part of rugby and Jordan is just a silly error. And it meant that the All Blacks were really under the cost from there on in. Now those are sort of my talking points for the game. Now if you contextualise the game, does it really matter? Not really. I mean, as, as Ali Saber said in his post-match uh, press conference, uh, we've lost uh, the battle but we want to win the war. They've lost an opening game, but look, the, the, the biggest threat to their, them getting out of the pool is Italy, which the All Blacks should, should not to underestimate Italy, but the All Blacks should, should go through them with relative ease. So look, the game doesn't really mean an awful lot in the context of the competition, apart from confidence, pride and momentum, which the, the South Africans proved that you don't need to win the opening game to go on to win the tournament, being the first team to do it in the last World Cup, but... Look, All Black don't necessarily look like the team to win it this year. However, they have shown um, the ability to bounce back in, in, in weeks gone by. So look, they can do it. As far as the French are concerned, um, really performing sort of 70-80% of what they can do. Uh, maybe due, due to the greasy ball, but a win on the opening, opening evening under what was a phenomenal atmosphere is something that they'll be very happy with. So... Look, that is the final score, 27-13 to the French. Let me know what you thought of the game in the comment section down below. Uh, I thought it was a brilliant game. A lot of people contacting me, uh, friends that, that you know had never really watched rugby, you know, not frequent watchers of rugby, and they said they enjoyed it, and that's the main thing at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, as I say, let me know what you thought of the game in the comment section below. I'm uh, happy to have a, a discussion or two about the events. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching.